related to school education, 10 related to higher education, and seven topics related to uh, entire education system. So among 10, uh, one important component is uh, internationalization of higher education. Now, when we talk about uh, internationalization of higher education, uh, first we need to understand uh, what, how we define internationalization of higher education. What was the uh, genesis or how evolution took place at global uh, environment and how universities are used as a tool, we call it the soft diplomacy uh, through collaboration, through MOUs, through exchange of the student and how inter institutional agreement works together for enhancement of uh, uh, education quality. Uh, let me just take a, a review of uh, when we talked about the international, uh, internationalization of higher education. After First World War, we all aware that uh, First World War and Second World War uh, was an instrument, uh, particularly due to First and Second World War, uh, particularly in second after Second World War, world divided in two blocks, and uh, it was a situation uh, we call it as a Cold War. And now, uh, after First World War, uh, there was a, a institution, important international institution, that is League of Nations was established uh, to maintain international peace and security. At the same time, uh, after the before the establishment of international institution, League of Nations, uh, in the United States of America, uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner president and president of Columbia University, Nicholas Mary Butler, who was who has established uh, Institute of International Education in 1990, and the main uh, objective of that institution to develop a soft diplomacy for our education, where uh, teachers, student, academician, they can interact to each other, and uh, they develop a strategic thinking for international, global, and peace and security. Then, in 1925. Uh, we call it as DAD now in India. Uh, now DAD is a very famous uh, because uh, today in Germany, if you want to have education, it is a free education. Even international student like us or any student from India, they can get a free education uh, in Germany. Uh, and uh, the DAD is very important uh, organization. Uh, that quality German Academic Exchange Service was established in 1925. And again, role is a Respect uh, is the same uh, to interact with the teacher, to interact with the student, develop a strategic partnership through MOUs, through sending the student. And uh, from 1925 to 2020, dad is playing important role. Thousands of Indian students now in Germany and also uh, uh, German students are also getting education in India in a different level. Then after 1925, in 1934, uh, British Council was established. We all aware the role of British Council. Uh, British Council is not only for giving the uh, books or the, uh, some of the libraries, not giving the books to the Indian student, but the British Council also uh, hosting the uh, good student as well as the sending the good student from India. And uh, from 1934, uh, British Council also playing an important role for internationalization. Then in Fulbright uh, program in 1946, uh, uh, Fulbright Commission, uh, particularly they have started the number of fellowship and uh, one of the Fulbright scholar means one of the prestigious fellowship uh, started by US government in 1946 and from 1946 to till date, those students uh, uh, got a fellowship, they become an instrument of, uh, uh, or they become an ambassador for their respective countries. Take example of person like me, uh, when I say the, uh, my academic uh, CV, I use the word Fulbright Scholar. So that kind of uh, prestigious uh, given by Indian academician or across the globe. So Fulbright program played a very important role uh, for exchanging ideas, thoughts among the Indian students as well as across the globe. Then in uh, CPES, that is the Central Eastern European Exchange Program for University Student uh, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, this scheme launched by uh, Central and Eastern European universities, uh, they call it as CPES. 
then 80s onward uh, the erasmus uh, mundus uh, again it is the european union student exchange program as very important program launched by european commission uh, and 1987 uh, thousands of uh, indian students or southeast asian student or asian student got the benefit of that uh, fellowship they get uh, exchange the credit course a short term course as the, as the one semester two semester and through erasmus uh, uh, Indian, uh, European Union playing playing important role. Then uh, after Erasmus, the Tempus, uh, the Transnational European Mobility Program for University Studies scheme means uh, you can have a one semester, two semesters here, and you can uh, transfer your credit with the European universities and so on. And then recently, the Australian award. Uh, this is a new go um, Australian government started new policy for uh, uh, Indian stu student. And through this kind of organization, or, or through this kind of uh, uh, commission or the organization, uh, there was a diplomacy called a soft diplomacy used by Western world. Uh, even in an India country like India, also we have launched a number of schemes, take example of Obama Singh 21st Century Knowledge Initiative, or so on. In fact, the uh, Indian Council of Cultural Relations, ICCR, is playing an important role to giving a fellowship. Uh, from across the globe, particularly ICCR is focusing on uh, Southeast and South Asian countries, and we are receiving the thousands of students every year. Eight thousand stu uh, students we are receiving through Indian Council of Culture Relation, and idea is that they should get a degree from us, uh, not only degree namesake. They should become a ambassador for us, and through uh, the ambassador. We can propagate Indian ideas, Indian thoughts, Indian philosophy, Indian culture, and uh, we should give a message to the world that how we should maintain international peace, stability, and security. So this is uh, basically idea about the uh, internationalization. But when you talk about uh, uh, internationalization of higher education, we need to understand particularly 80s onwards uh, when uh, globalization started. And now we talk with, we are talking about reverse globalization, but in the 80s onwards, revolution in science and technology played a very important role to change human life. And uh, through the revolution in technology, time and space become com become compressed, and uh, it played a very important role to exchange the thoughts and uh, ideas from cross border uh, level. Now, when we talked about uh, a worldwide flow of ideas, again, uh, it's not only uh, ideas, but it is the resources, uh, it is the people, it is the economy, uh, it is culture, values, well thoughts, good services, and technology and strategic partnership. So, when we, when a university like Rao Ambedkar University and Mahu is signing any agreement with any European country or in any European university. It means this is not only in a degree namesake. Uh, your student will go, Europe, European student will come there, they will learn the academic part as well as the social part, cultural part, and that will, after 10 years, after 15 years, same student will become ambassadors. And also, we are uh, resource, getting resources, we are transferring our ideas, culture, and good services as well as the technology. And also, we are developing the strategic partnership. That is called the internationalization of higher education. Now, uh, people talk about the uh, country like uh, uh, India, uh, it is very difficult to uh, analyze the waters, how much we achieved through internationalization. I'll come later on part, but uh, you must uh, understand the relevance of uh, a strategic partnership. Uh, how strategic partnership should strengthen, what kind of uh, uh, policy we should implement, I'll come later on, but uh, we need to understand that this kind of thing. Now, I'm giving this statistical data. Uh, you need to understand uh, uh, what are the what is the status uh, in India in present when we talk about internationalized higher education because new uh, education policy has dedicated one specific component of internationalized higher education. And the uh, idea is that uh, 100 top, first top 100 university as for the time, high banking university or US banking university should uh, uh, set up their branches or set up their uh, sub-centers in India and uh, 100 top Indian universities uh, should go abroad 
and uh, get a good number of student exchange ideas uh, among themselves, exchange the faculty, exchange the student, and uh, uh, through soft diplomacy to achieve a national uh, peace and stability across the globe. So that is the main uh, idea. But when you talk about uh, overseas student India, uh, this is the uh, data I am giving to the Reserve Bank of India. In fact, uh, I have published one paper on this and uh, you can get it all details in that. Uh, in 2017-18, we have received uh, 100 student, uh, international students from 166 countries and total number was uh, uh, 46,144. Uh, figure now may increase uh, in 18-19, but uh, Indian student, uh, how uh, we are losing our currency, how we are losing our um, good brain, you need to understand this kind of uh, uh, structure. Uh, Indian, uh, when we talk about the Indian student, uh, the, the first destiny is of Indian student, they should go, um, most of the student, their destiny is United States of America. UK, then Australia, New Zealand. In fact, uh, some of the students also going to UAE and uh, uh, Arab world. Uh, uh, 5,970 uh, 5, Indian students are pursuing courses in foreign countries in uh, March 2019 as per the UNESCO data. And uh, when uh, this student going to India or abroad, they are not just going uh, for the degree, they are also spending uh, on tuition, hostel fees, and uh, uh, Indian students studying abroad uh, short of 44 from this. Uh, uh, in 2013 one point billion dollar uh, our students spent in abroad, and in 2017-18, 2.8 billion dollar Indian student spent in abroad. It means uh, whatever amount uh, US is earning while selling uh, defense equipment to India, it is more than that. One single uh, important company, international student or Indian student is giving uh, too much uh, cost to the US alone in, in the name of international of higher education. Now, uh, look at the, uh, this uh, learning curve. This, this is a sequential growth in a overseas education expenditure indicate that more Indian students are going abroad for personal education. Now, uh, what is the reason behind that? Uh, why our student is going abroad? Why uh, take example of the student uh, who are getting a good education in IITs, IIN, and uh, after completing their graduation or post-graduation, they are going abroad, not only going abroad, but they hardly someone come back uh, uh, in India after the um, completing their post-graduation or research. And that is the main question. In compared to China, uh, when we talk about the China, uh, Chinese government uh, uh, played a very important role for internationalization. Uh, I have statistical data that uh, uh, China, uh, Chinese make a one resolution. So if you go in the US or any other Western world, you will find the number of international students, Chinese students in different universities. But the condition is that after completing their research or after completing graduation, they have to come back and uh, do the uh, work for nation building in China. So it is not like us, uh, a free lakh student every year going abroad, but we don't know how many will come back. So that is the difference between India and China, and we need to. Uh, consider this issue very critically while framing the new education policy. Because uh, just sending a good brain to abroad, that will not change the uh, policy, as that will not change the development strategy of Indian government. Now, uh, let me, uh, when we talked about, uh, uh, I said uh, 100, uh, around 44,000 international students we have, but uh, which are the students we are receiving? And how we are getting the student. Uh, about uh, uh, Indian Council of Culture Relation, every year giving a, a good uh, fellowship to the ISIS and put to the international student, particularly from the Afghanistan, Nepal, Bhutan, as well as the Southeast Asian countries. And uh, 
they are getting a education but there are the students who are also coming from on self finance and uh, uh, again uh, this self finance student also we are getting from the less developed countries take example of sudan nigeria afghanistan and that is main concern uh, i am heading this department of international center from last several years and uh, we uh, finding a very much difficulties to of their language cultural issues and, and other uh, issues so uh, until 2014 student from african uh, country especially nigeria ethiopia then south sudan uh, they focus on that and uh, we all aware that uh, uh, when you talk about the international student most foreign student come from this five to six country that is the uh, nepal is uh, out of 44000 a uh, 24.9 percent comes from Nepal, and reason is that the most of the Nepali student uh, means uh, we all are aware that the, the, on the border area, this migrant uh, they are they are also staying in India, but they have ne- Nepali citizenship, so they get the benefit of that because the name uh, this international student is over and above quota means whatever you have uh, qualification or or whatever you are. Uh, merit, but uh, this international student get a fifteen percent additional seats uh, in all courses, where it is a BTEC or any engineering good course. So they get a uh, additional uh, facilities of fifteen percent, and uh, most of the Nepali student get that kind of portion. Then nine point five percent student from Afghanistan, four point eight percent from Sudan. 4.3 percent from Bhutan and 4 percent of from Nigeria. It means uh, whatever student we are receiving, we are receiving from less developed countries, and that is a real challenge for us. How we should attract Western world, and in fact, all the student uh, they are getting the admission in the field of scientific area. Some of the student uh, uh, they are more interested in scientific area. They Either they get uh, admission engineering field, pharmacy, or technology, or uh, uh, masters in science, and so on. But uh, uh, in a Western world, when we sign uh, MOU with them, uh, most of the Western uh, countries, particularly when we talk about the European countries, uh, we have for well, Savitri Bai Phule University is a key strategic player for internationalization. Uh, whatever number we are, you are seeing on uh, this slide. Out of that, 40% we are posting in Savitri Bai Phule Pune University. So uh, our number is very high in terms of. But most of the student uh, we are receiving from these four five countries, and when we are signing MOU with them uh, in Western world, take example of uh, in University of Gottingen, we have a collaboration with uh, Gottingen University of Groningen and so on. Uh, but when they comes to India. They are going to the social sciences. I am not saying that uh, social sciences are the bad. Social sciences are also important, but they are either they go for performing arts or the social sciences. Our strategy should be we should should be that how we should attract uh, Western world to uh, or Western countries to get admission in scientific field as well as the social sciences or humanities, and that is a big challenge while framing the internationalization strategy. so this is a one important issue then uh, uh, take example of uh, international student in india i just uh, gave example uh, uh, four five countries but there are the iran yemen bangladesh nigeria bhutan sudan afghanistan and nepal so this is one curve we can see that maximum number uh, we are receiving from this country uh, and uh, that is real concern in, in fact uh, uh, with iran earlier in 80s or 90s, we received a good number of international students uh, from Iran uh, in the name of uh, oil for education. Uh, that policy has changed by government, and uh, uh, that number is going decreasing. Yeah, and uh, most of the private player also now focusing the uh, international student for different purposes. Now, Indian student, uh, uh, I said uh, their first choice is the US. Second. Canada, Australia, then uh, Saudi Arabia, UAE, New Zealand, Bahrain, and China. So most of the students also spending uh, time. They are getting education 
in this country and that is the real challenge how we should stop this country now uh, uh, this is uh, i'll just uh, take i'll give it to you just statistical data that uh, from last several years uh, we are uh, giving uh, so more focus on internationalization and where is a good number of students uh, when we talk about male female we are also uh, giving a good more focus on internationalization and male female ratio also compared to well in terms of international strategy uh, look at the uh, i said the, uh, we have received a good number of international students uh, we have fully dedicated office for that and we have signed a number of agreement with number of international institution and universities and uh, see the list of the student in afghanistan we from 2000 13 14 2 2019 20 we have received uh, uh, 2722 students so can you believe that uh, such kind of students uh, we are receiving from afghanistan and uh, uh, afghan government uh, playing important role central government is playing important role to hosting up uh, afghan uh, student and the idea is that uh, you all aware that uh, afghanistan situation is now somehow they are managing but a uh, student they don't know what will happen Uh, their future so government of india giving a more focus on afghanistan and we are receiving the student but the problem is that uh, uh, there are this few challenges while receiving the international student particularly from this country uh, one is that uh, there is a cultural shock for them in fact uh, most of the afghan student they aware about our uh, bollywood uh, they the moment they enter in a university campus they use hindi language or hindi share shayari so they can attract the indian administrator or indian professor and they take admission and, uh, and they are very very some of the students are very good some of the um, they feel that uh, they are isolated uh, from their areas and lot of issues but uh, this uh, figures is very good in terms of hosting uh, international student angolia australia and these are this uh, uh, country but uh, Uh, then uh, Bahrain again uh, take example of Bahrain we have received 86 student but most of the student are under the category of OCI or the PIO personal Indian origin or the uh, OCI category so because that category uh, means our uh, Indian brother sisters when they go abroad and they settle there and uh, they want to come back in India so they have that the category called OCI or the PIO. under that category most of the student are uh, they take admission in indian indian institution and the uh, uh, other part of it now uh, this is a figure uh, these are the uh, from last 6 uh, 7 years i have received uh, more than 8500 uh, student from 105 countries in savitribai phule university so what i said earlier uh, uh, savitribai phule university is one of the best university in terms of internationalization and this is a figure shows us uh, that uh, how much we interlink uh, in different countries for the internationalization uh, this is one then uh, when you talked about uh, international clarification uh, let me what government of in india has uh, conveyed the message to this uh, new education my next uh, counter part will talk about uh, uh, challenges and uh, Uh, issues in higher education policy, but uh, uh, there are the two challenges as well as opportunity in new education policy. Uh, everyone is talking about uh, uh, this is the policy called after 34 years is new education policy is so rightly pointed out by government of India and it is the case. But uh, if you look at the global education policy, you name it uh, uh, even in a. If you look at the U.S. government and uh, if you look uh, even U.S. Constitution, you will not find that uh, education is subject in their constitution. I was surprised when I was uh, uh, interacted with the numbers of research scholars and experts in, in the field of higher education. They said the each state has autonomy. Each state has a different policy for ranking, for credit, transfer of credit, and education policy, and uh, so on. Uh, most of the uh, student, uh, in fact, uh, uh, there is a barrier. Since the, there are 50 states, and 50 states has different policy and or education. Whereas in Indian government uh, uh, has uh, one policy. Uh, although Indian uh, education uh, is in the concurrent list, the state has a 
power to implement few policies and the central government has the power to uh, control and the central government and state government should play important role uh, for education and for that purpose uh, it is very difficult to change the education policy consequently means after 10 years or 20 years it takes time because each state has a different issues um, take example of a uh, two point formula when you talk about uh, uh, three language formula or two language formula there is a crisis uh, come from the southern part of india that, uh, that there are a number of issues in that so uh, what i'm saying here uh, uh, this policy although it came from 34 years but uh, uh, none of the country has uh, also been changing its policy it is a continuation of the earlier uh, policy i'll give one example uh, in 1948 first education committee focus after independence the, the committee gave a different recommendation and um, in 1968 uh, Kothari committee played a very important role where Kothari committee also talked about uh, how much percentage we should spend on higher education, how much percentage uh, university should spend on library. Uh, means when we talked about uh, uh, new education policy, uh, library is a very important role. Means, uh, library is a backbone of uh, any institution and uh, uh, yeah. the Kotari Commission uh, clearly stated that the six percent of its budget of any university should spend uh, on library. But unfortunately, we did one important survey uh, in uh, Western universities, and uh, out of that, uh, 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 Maharashtra, uh, Gujarat, and Goa, and uh, that survey says that. Uh, none of the uh, three state among the three state one university is not spend more than two percent of its uh, university budget on language. So same thing happened with the uh, how much we are spending on higher education. Although this new education policy is talking about six percent of GDP, where state and central government should come together and they should spend on uh, higher education or the education as a whole, not only the higher education but also the uh, uh, school education but uh, uh, it needs a proper vision it needs a proper policy and uh, on that line uh, we can change the policy so Kotari committee also talks about uh, 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 equity justice and uh, uh, this committee played a very important role and out of after that uh, we had a new policy in 1986 and uh, again in 1992 we have amended this new education policy uh, uh, widely consultants, uh, 2.5 lakh gram panchayat draft education policy translated into 22 languages and uh, uh, consultation dialogue parliamentary meeting on uh, human resources uh, ministry as well as the academia and environment of people. Uh, I will not deal with that, I will just focus on uh, holistic approach of uh, education. Uh, my uh, point is that uh, uh, there are the issue, issues in the challenges as well as opportunities. Uh, what are the challenges? Challenges as to how to implement uh, such a uh, visionary document uh, because uh, whatever we are seeing that uh, higher education issues, that is a 68 page document available on the website. Uh, rest of the document is not, it was made for public, but now we are just talking about the 68 page document where. Uh, there are uh, different kind of issues uh, discussing. One is that um, uh, by 2035, we should uh, achieve a 50 percent of gross involvement ratio. Uh, that is a very good uh, uh, approach. But uh, from last seven decades, uh, let me tell you that uh, how we are lacking in terms of in higher education, uh, even in uh, present time in 2020, in 1947 to 2020 our gross enrollment ratio is not more than 27 percent and out of that uh, uh, most of the students are from the area of commerce and the management as well as the arts and humanities faculties uh, and again when you talked about gross enrollment ratio of a marginal section of the society particularly diverse if you map the diversity if you map the uh, tribals if you map the uh, uh, schedule caste and the uh, Muslims and uh, other nomadic tribes, you will not find that most of the uh, students belong in the marginal section of society in the field of 
scientific development. So our challenge is that how we should include in the field of scientific area, not only in a multidisciplinary area, but in the scientific area. New education policy also talked about uh, uh, after 12 years, if someone uh, get a one year degree, they will get certificate two year, they will get a uh, diploma three year uh, degree, they will get a, a bachelor degree, but someone wants to have a uh, master, they want to uh, pursue master, then they will give, have a four year degree and one year MA and then PhD. But there will be a separate teaching university, there will be a separate teaching and research university, and there will be a research university. Country like India, uh, seven decade times is not that much long if you want to become a good learning institution of uh, May I request to? Yes. Uh, sir, sir, we Hello. have a. Uh, sir, yeah, may yeah. I request to sum up, please? Yeah, I'm summing up. Sir, yes, please, sir. Please. Yeah. So, my. Uh, so, this kind of issues, particularly in the field of higher education, what we need, we need to uh, set a goal, but a proper vision and implementation. 6% uh, of GDP is very important, uh, is very good step by the government of India that uh, central government and state government is going to focus on 6% of GDP. But uh, uh, for that, uh, we need uh, important implementation, I, I implementation strategy. And last point I will take is, there are two important uh, uh, ideas come out from this new education policy, that is the National Research Education Foundation or National Research Foundation, and then look with there where a scientific literature, traditional scientific literature we can compile, then e content on digital language and virtual lab. So that kind of uh, issue will come out. I'll not talk with that, but uh, now I'll just focus on uh, internationalization. Uh, internationalization can come out if you develop a scientific uh, uh, infrastructure uh, in all across the Indian universities, then you can attract uh, to the uh, a good university in India, number one. Number two, uh, if you want to set up outside the campus, uh, you will get a market in the area of Africa as well as Southeast Asia, not in Western world. That is, a, and our challenge is how we could attract uh, Western world in the area of scientific uh, field. Then third important challenge uh, for internationalization, uh, signing the MOU or Initiating the number of schemes, take, take the government of India started a new policy of study in India. But also in study in India, what I feel that we are getting the students from same countries where we have already now we have good number of students, uh, but we are not attracting good numbers of students from Western world. So internationalization, and we need a two kind of strategy. One is to develop infrastructure in the field of scientific uh, area where we can attract good number of international students develop a strategic partnership and uh, I don't think if you uh, attract, if you ask to the Cambridge, Oxford or uh, Harvard and they will not come because from last 400 years that university is playing important role from there. So they will not come and set up the, their campuses on Indian soil. They will send uh, their uh, another second or third uh, line of uh, leadership but they will not come, actual knowledge will not transfer while attracting the uh, good number of institutes. So we need to focus on such kind of issue uh, when we will start uh, implementing a new education policy, particularly you know, uh, in for internationalization of higher education. So I'll stop here. Uh, we'll, uh, when we will have a question answer, then we'll, uh, we'll talk later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. you uh, your presentation uh, uh, has a very impactful, uh, sir. And I thank you. And now I would like to invite uh, uh, Professor G. Palanthurai. And uh, I would like to introduce uh, about Professor G. Palanthurai. Professor G. Palanthurai is a former professor of Department of Political Science and Development Administration, Gandhi Gram Rural Institute, deemed University, Gandhi Gram, uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, he has wrote uh, uh, 
70 books uh, through renowned publications, uh, 95 monographs, development progress report, political participations, micro plannings, and uh, he wrote 163 research articles. He prepared 37 commission reports and uh, he has participated in 28 international conferences, 165 seminars, and many of the fellowships. And he has completed many research projects funded by UNDP, UNICEF, UGC, ICSSR, and many more organizations, reputed organizations. Professor G. Palanthurai as a uh, broad biodata. So, due to the shortage of time, I am presenting a brief CV of uh, Professor G. Palanthurai, and I welcome Professor G. Palanthurai for his special address in new education policy workshop. Sir, please come and sir, please address us. Professor G. Palanthrai. Welcome, sir. Journals. 
what is it for a higher learning institution we need research we need academic program then it is connected with the community that is called extension outreach program but from i mean from the very beginning itself in the first commission itself i mean it has been mentioned cursorily subsequently they have appointed a stimali committee i mean for this specific purpose but after that there was no such a kind of i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, follow up in this country but now one thing is very positive that one has to consider uh, the, the present government made it as a mandate for higher learning institutions it is not research it is not mere academic i mean community outreach program is a mandate for every higher learning institution that is very positive but through a scheme that is unnat bharat abhiyan but my concern is i mean uh, we are living in a context in a very critical context what is a critical context in a prismatic development process state market society led dynamic development i mean market continuously drives the policy maker to shape a policy oriented for the benefit of the market in the same way the state is also doing the same thing but at the same time but the society the social needs look at the india still 67% of the people are in the rural areas and people are facing plethora of problems in the rural areas that is why they migrate from rural areas to urban areas right so in that context is it not necessary to help the community to come up but the present government has made it that community service is not uh, i mean a, a, a stand alone it is a part of your academic exercise so that is why they have introduced a new concept by my question is it needs a new consciousness among the academics academic leaders teachers i mean researchers students what is a new consciousness that is a new social consciousness what are the problems we face today in this uh, uh, i mean country how to solve all those problems i mean how a, a teacher can a, a researcher can solve sometimes people may think that i mean how a science teacher can go to the community help the community i mean it is only the social science likewise uh, students can uh, i mean the uh, teachers can ask i mean a mathematics teacher went to uh, uh, i mean a village where they sat with the students i mean interacting with them they found out the students are very intelligent but the teaching was very poor so immediately they went to the teacher so how you are teaching mathematics to the students so they explained this is a way we teach they told them that you please come to our university we teach you how to teach mathematics to the students for about 15 days they organize a course only in the evening hours then they 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 analyzed how the teaching has been improved how students have picked up the learning fastly and uh, perfectly so a mathematics teacher can do extension a mathematics teacher can connect himself with the the community a computer teacher went to a village with a few computers they put in a community hall asked the students to play in the computer for a few hours they observed they found out that they have enormous aspiration to use with a computer then they set up a small computer center with the help of uh, i mean the the rotary club and they found out the 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 enormous improvement in their learning process so likewise science engineering any graduate can go to the village and help the villagers but in our system i mean it is not integral the the extension is not integral so that is why i am saying that that consciousness has to be created among ourselves so most of the occasions we are we, we have been oriented to be in the blame game we need not blame any others if we have a passion if we have a commitment and we feel that i mean our presence has to be felt and i i should be a, 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 a needed person for the community
community so i am an inevitable person for a, a community so from that perspective one has to think that aspect has to be integrated into the policy this is the most important dimension i mean it is being left out because continuously we have been seeing our educational paradigm our educational policy or our educational whole system is driving the institutions to produce marketable i mean graduates where they can market only in the industry or in the government sector or in the service sector beyond that people those who are i mean 68 67% of the people are living in the rural areas for them who is serving nobody is serving so in that context i mean our whole policy has to be shaped in such a way that i mean high i mean rural higher education so how to educate our community that is most important thing i mean in in after 73 years of our independence i mean we have technology we have science we have well developed but at the same time we are not in a position to solve the problems of the waste i mean why we have a such a bharat the such a bharat has come because we don't have i mean the the cleaning habit the behavior of uh, i mean uh, the the the, the uh, keeping our place uh, clean neat tidy so in that context i mean extension is the most important component to be integrated in the whole of the framework research is mandatory and for our promotion also it is necessary but teaching it is mandatory we have to teach and apart from this extension is also mandate but how do we do extension many of the occasions i mean teachers used to ask where is a fund where is money who gives money i mean this is for extension we don't require money at all i mean you need only passion if you start doing that work money will flow money will follow you i mean there are many areas where villages need i mean i mean support from the academic institutions for instance preparing gram panchayat development plan for a period of 5 years how to plan for a village i mean who will analyze the data of the villages household data then village data how to analyze then how to prioritize so all those things could be done only by the experts i mean we have given that responsibility to panchayat so if we decide that we can work with the nearest uh, panchayat areas we talk about uh, i mean actually i mean poverty abject poverty i mean right but in the classroom but have we seen uh, the people those who are affected to it when i was a teacher in the university i took a batch of students and the trainees to a place where the manual scavengers are living both the students as well as the trainees i mean the class one officers who came for a training they were not in a position to stand not even 15 minutes in the place where the manual scavengers are living then only they realized so when we come back to the university when we had a review meeting and many of the students many of the trainees i mean shed tears sir never we had seen such a kind of uh, i mean living so such a way we have to sensitize the i mean teachers sensitize the 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 students sensitize the researchers then one more important aspect many of the occasions we select the topics i mean there are umpteen number of topics if you look at the ministries uh, uh, i mean prioritized areas we find a lot of areas to do research but we never bother about uh, all those things if you choose all those things when you do research money will come from the ministry there is a possibility so in that context so my submission to the faculty members and the students and the research scholars and socially relevant issues have to be taken up for research it is a challenging one because once you take up such a kind of socially relevant project so logical end you have to bring it to uh, that one i mean you have you have con- concluded i mean you have done a research you have concluded submitted your report but what report says i mean how your policy can be changed how your practice can be changed so 
that level you can do policy advocacy also so you need uh, such a kind of specialization also it's not mere submission of report beyond submission of report we have to move so in such a way i mean the extension has to be linked with the uh, i mean the 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 the, 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 the framework uh, teaching is mandated fine but research is mandated fine now through unnat bharat abhiyan we mandated extension but that mandated extension should be embedded in the whole process it is not only research uh, institute it is not the teaching it is not uh, i mean the other colleges so every higher learning institution has to do all the three functions i mean we have qualified teachers i mean we are second to none we can do but we need a new social consciousness what is a new social consciousness our country our people our culture so what is to be done for our community to build our nation in a new direction so how to do such a kind of work with our community if this university i mean is doing it it should be a model so we need more of models i mean working with 100 panchayats supposing if uh, this university ambedkar university is working with 100 uh, village panchayats i'm making it as a model a livable model their livelihood is secured it's a clean village water is being provided clean water is being provided i mean transparent administration is being given all children are going to school i mean there is no st- uh, i mean uh, uh, the the, the uh, intermittent uh, stop of uh, school going children so all are continuing up to the uh, i mean t- uh, 10th standard so in such a way if panchayats are working if universities are enabling them and providing not only knowledge and ideas a skill i mean providing such a kind of linkages continuously with the community definitely you are a model you are a model so extension uh, should be integrated into it whether the policy has codified or not while implementing the policy if teachers feel that this is a need of the hour because we have unnat bharat abhiyan we have to do it we can do it in such a way we have to uh, i mean sensitize our academics every teacher supposing a, 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 a law school teacher can go to a village in a very simplified way i mean teach the villagers about the constitution i mean in south africa nelson mandela i mean told the professors you please prepare i mean a constitution for the people it is not for the lawyers constitution for the people in the people's language so they prepared a small document and it went to the people through the the preachings of the church fathers when they go for i mean preaching on sunday they did both i mean explaining the constitution to the people and the new testament in such a way i mean i mean awareness can be created about the constitution there are i mean more than 200 uh, i mean laws protecting the poor protecting the marginalized i mean protecting the tribals protecting the dalits i mean these are all weapons of the poor but people are not aware if our faculty members are taking these kind of weapon to the people this is the i mean contribution of our government you take it you can use it you protect yourself such a kind of awareness could be created skill development you can play a very important role connecting with the community through the panchayat panchayat can be a powerful instrument you can use faculty can use and it could be a sustainable i mean linkage with the community so this is the most important work the university has to do in the present context because i mean environment is weak biodiversity is weak i mean uh, earth warming take place i mean all kinds of environmental issues are cropping up mounting up mounting pressure on the policy maker so in that context i mean the community work is more important and if we are not taking up because we are educated we have our own sole responsibility and we have to take up that responsibility whether policy drives us 
or not we have our mandate because we are socially conscious if we are socially conscious we can work with the community i mean we can work for the community when we work with the community it is more important i mean we should not be little them they are the honorable citizens of this country but unfortunately in our country we have considered people as beneficiaries they are honorable citizens now they become the beneficiaries of the government schemes if you go with them work with them and uh, uh, i mean give them confidence they will emerge on their own they will emerge as a honorable citizens and they build their i mean future and uh, the 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 extension uh, is the most important missing element and we should not miss whether policy has missed it or not i mean we should not miss as a socially conscious person as a teacher uh, in a higher learning institution we have to take it up and work with the community and bring changes and through this you are known to the whole world i mean if 100 panchayats if this university is working in 100 panchayats to prepare a plan continuously working you put some human development indicators if the human development indicators are improving this is a solid contribution of uh, the 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 university in the rural areas it is a model and everybody will follow this model so with this i i i mean express my deep sense of gratitude to the organizers for having given me the opportunity to uh, intervene very briefly with the given time thank you so thank you sir uh, very very wonderful and very impressive address uh, now अब मैं चेयरपर्सन एड्रेस के लिए हमारे डायरेक्टर रिसर्च एक्सटेंशन एंड ट्रेनिंग प्रोफेसर डी के वर्मा सर से निवेदन करता हूं कृपया सर हमें इस नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी के इसमें समापन की तरफ जा रहे हैं सर प्लीज प्लीज सर मैं निवेदन करता हूं प्रोफेसर डी के वर्मा सर थैंक यू थैंक यू इनफैक्ट इट वॉज वेरी enriching addresses by both the learned speakers and uh, on behalf of dr b r ambedkar university of social sciences i express our thanks gratitude to both the speakers and in particular bringing out certain strong recommendations that we can translate into action plans uh, professor khare Uh, is very right in mentioning that the internationalization of higher education must be in equal terms but because of the subjects we are lacking in science and technology and that's why we are not able to attract much uh, scholarship from western part of the globe and most of the students those who are coming to our country are from africa and southeast asian nations and this is a big challenge because uh, we we are very good right now in performing arts and social sciences but definitely our brain drain is towards the western world particularly in the us and uk because of the science and technological development in those countries and it's a big challenge and how oh, we could see and how we could plan to attract uh, in these areas it's a big real it's a big challenge i congratulate professor kare and his university savitri bai phule university because as he mentioned 40% of the foreign students are in, the, in that university and it's a very creditable and we are really honored to have such a resource person from this university and uh, the important thing the professor khare also pointed out with regard to global education policies when he was reviewing different policies in the country policies are not changing very frequently in those countries and there is some continuum to be maintained i think this should be with our country also let us have some strong footing on education development and we must continue for five six decades to establish ourselves professor khare also pointed out uh, one very important thing that the well reputed universities like oxford and cambridge may not come to the to open their campuses in the in our country 
and they may second the second or third line. I totally agree, but uh, there must be some interaction with these uh, uh, universities also. I would like to, I would like to also inform you. Just a minute, please. I am sorry for the disturbance. It is creating outside. Uh, the important consideration again is with regard to entry and exit policy. I would like to inform Professor Khare that when our founder Vice Chancellor Dr. R. S. Koyal was here and he was the one of the honourable member of the Kasturangan Committee, where with this entry and exit policy we framed at our level, and uh, we are following this for uh, our courses. So uh, definitely our university being the first university of social sciences in the country as we claim and at the birthplace of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, we take it our responsibility at least to open up this uh, social sciences in a much more meaningful way and uh, certain study areas like Dr. Ambedkar thought in philosophy, Buddhism and Mao particularly, the birthplace of Baba Sahib Ambedkar is uh, very well known as military headquarters of war. So, different strategic studies are very much needed to integrate and we may have because in the future we need such, uh, this kind of uh, universities of uh, defense and policy studies and I would like to inform you that uh, uh, innovating in the traditional way, we have opened up one post graduation course in police administration as well in which we are admitting all the professional DYSPs and they are our alumni and they are working in different districts of the state as uh, DYSPs and SPs. So such kind of innovations we must make. Another point uh, of action we may take from Professor Kare is uh, the percentage of the fund that we have to devote for the library and such kind of knowledge development. It's very essential because Baba Sahib Ambedkar also emphasized on this part. We must invest more on the productive aspects of the university rather than the infrastructure and other kind of thing. So developing the knowledge creation center and I would like to inform you that under the leadership of our Vice Chancellor Professor Asha Shukla, we have renamed our library as a knowledge center, Mahatma Phule Knowledge Creation Center. And that is the way we are working for the education. Uh, Professor Kare has uh, given very academically enriching information through PowerPoint presentations. Uh, we are very really thankful to you, Professor Kare, for taking pains and giving us this information. And really, uh, once again, I congratulate you because uh, your university had 8,500 students from 105 countries. And that's a good recognition for the university. And we had such a good honorable resource person from that university. Uh, Professor Palani Thurai uh, rightly pointed out the extension part of the education. In fact, uh, extension and training could have been the essential and mandated part, but to most of us, because of the market-driven forces, as he rightly pointed out, we lost the uh, basic aim of education to transform for our country. And uh, Professor Palantrai, I would like to inform you that ours is a uh, University Act uh, mandate for research, extension, training and education. Equal emphasis is given. 25% of our activities are focused on academics, then 25% on research, 25% extension, and 25% training. We regularly organize sensitization program. So uh, uh, you are very right in mentioning that uh, extension must be integral part. It must be a mandated part. And uh, to sensitize the functionaries, particularly teachers, uh, with very good examples of mathematics, computer, uh, you have highlighted how our teachers can uh, link their uh, resources, link their brains with the community and motivate the students to ch bring the change. And uh, we have also started Professor Palanathurai, one program on community leadership and sustainable development, where we see our students uh, as social managers. So they have to, 50% of their uh, credit, they have to compete in the field. They have to be in the field, they have to live with the community there, and they have to bring the change. And the assessment will be integral part. The community will also assess their work. 
so we'll have a combined assessment evaluation pattern also we are innovating so the, the community in which they are working they will bring the change and the community will also assess so it will be kind of a strong bridge to them i really uh, congratulate uh, professor palanthurai for taking this kind of concept to um, to 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 its end of making because uh, no policy could be successful until unless uh, their implementation plans are very solid and the functionaries are conscious enough to bring the change because policies can be good implementation plan could be good but their implementers they are not having their changed mind their mindsets are not changed so we you rightly pointed out and really concluded one very good to finding you have given for our uh, this uh, implementation action plan is of the social consciousness that need to be developed we are uh, sensitizing police officers here on gender and marginalized people on dalit and atrocities all these and when they come to our programs they realize how things are very bad in very bad shape as you right rightly pointed out when you take people to this scavengers community how they feel it they realize it so taking to the real situations is really wonderful and how to teach will be very effective if we take our students to the field you have rightly pointed out such sensitization and extension be linking with the framework the curriculum framework and uh, another important thing uh, is uh, the model that you have suggested for us so i would like to inform you uh, we have uh, established one cell in our university it's a, a self land india mission cell atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan cell that we have already established our university and we are conducting programs in the villages but as you suggested we will definitely propose 100 panchayats adoption plan and we would like to bring change in them and whatever changes are there uh, we would like to record it as a model and also would like to link it with the unnat bharat abhiyan so our two resource person have given us wonderful guidance very enriching guidance and they are marvelous one to reshape our uh, working uh, oriented towards the new education policy towards sustainable development and i think uh, we would uh, we would uh, bring our teaching faculty our students to that level to that platform where we can bring the change in the society Uh, uh there are some questions uh, but uh, because of the lack of time i will just uh, sum up with this kind of thing that the uh, internationalization of education we can approach with our mindset to make our own traditional wisdom indigenous knowledge and in those areas where india can give to the world in a more meaningful way like buddhism has given to the world we can uh, we can develop this peace education we can develop this kind of sustainable education to the world yoga and these are the areas where we can expand but definitely as professor khare pointed out if we want to be at par with the oxford and cambridge universities like thing then definitely we have to develop our science and technology courses to that level where we can attract uh, our international scholars to work and do research in our country and also as we have in our university act extension as an integral part we would like to present it as a model and i would request both of our resource persons to kindly continue guiding us in that and we would like to request them to be on advisory panel for this kind of model development so their guidance will definitely reshape and improve and improvise our way of working our functioning for the better way so from on behalf of the university on behalf of the vice chancellor of our university uh, professor asha shukla on behalf of the organizing committee i extend our heartfelt thanks to both the resource person for enlightening us on this action plan and uh, definitely uh, in the this month uh, long series we will developing certain action plans in which we will uh, bring out in a book form also for the government of india and the state government so i would be requesting our scholars <coughs> to kindly uh, give us 8 uh, or 10 pages of paper <coughs> written on that uh, guidance that they have given will include those in our uh, recommendation book to the government of india thank you very much on behalf of the university i thank and i now uh, hand over to the uh, uh, this uh, our governor dr pradeep kumar ji for what a thanks thank you sir uh, 
आपके चेयरपर्सन एड्रेस के लिए आपने जो हमें संबोधित किया अब मैं इस कार्यक्रम की जो हमारी ये कार्यशाला है इसमें धन्यवाद के लिए सबसे पहले जो हमारी संरक्षक हैं इस कार्यशाला की माननीय कुलाधिपति श्रीमती आनंदी बेन पटेल महामहिम राज्यपाल मध्य प्रदेश इस कार्यशाला की चेयरपर्सन हमारी माननीय कुलपति महोदया प्रोफेसर आशा शुक्ला मैडम इस कार्यशाला के डायरेक्टर इस कार्यशाला के जो सूत्रधार प्रोफेसर डी के वर्मा डायरेक्टर रिसर्च एक्सटेंशन एंड ट्रेनिंग डीन स्कूल ऑफ सोशल साइंस एंड चेयरमैन आई क्यू एस सी कार्यक्रम को ऑनलाइन करने की उनकी जो अनुमति थी उनकी जो उनका जो प्रेरणादायी मार्गदर्शन था उसके लिए मैं धन्यवाद करता हूं मैं हमारे डीन प्रोफेसर डी के वर्मा और डायरेक्टर रिसर्च एक्सटेंशन एंड ट्रेनिंग और मैं उनके इस कार्यक्रम के सारी आउटलाइन के लिए मैं उनका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करता हूं और माननीय कुलपति महोदया ने जो हमें अपना ये प्रेरणादायी मार्गदर्शन दिया है जिससे हम इस कार्यशाला को बहुत सुव्यवस्थित तरीके से प्रारंभ कर कर सके मैं उनका धन्यवाद करता हूं और हमारे दो माननीय जो रिसोर्स पर्सन प्रोफेसर जी पालन तुराई एंड प्रोफेसर विजय खरे मैं उनकी गर्मा में उपस्थिति के लिए उनका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आभार व्यक्त करता हूं प्रोफेसर जी पालन तुराई ने जिस तरह से मिसिंग डायमेंशन इन न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी और जो उन्होंने वंडरफुल अपना जो रूरल एरियाज को लेकर एड्रेस किया उसके लिए मैं आपका बहुत बहुत आभार करता हूं धन्यवाद करता हूं कि आपने हमारे निवेदन को स्वीकार किया और आपकी इस गरिमा में उपस्थिति से ये कार्यक्रम बहुत सफल हुआ मैं धन्यवाद अदा करता हूं हमारे माननीय रिसोर्स पर्सन प्रोफेसर विजय खरे सर का जिनका इंटरनेश इंटरनेशनलाइजेशन ऑफ हायर एजुकेशन में जो उनका इम्पेक्टफुल जो प्रेजेंटेशन था सर उससे हमें बहुत कुछ इसमें सीखने को मिलेगा जो हमारी इसमें रिकमेंडेशन आएंगी आपकी गर्मा में ही उपस्थिति के लिए मैंने आपसे निवेदन किया था आपने उस निवेदन को स्वीकार किया आपका सर मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आभार व्यक्त करता हूं इस पूरे कार्यक्रम के लिए हमारे जो एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव कोऑर्डिनेटर के रूप में हमारे साथ रहे हमारे रजिस्ट्रार साहब प्रोफेसर किशोर जौन सर का मैं धन्यवाद व्यक्त करता हूँ मैं हमारे विश्वविद्यालय के समस्त सम्मानित सम्मानित संकाय अध्यक्ष सम्मानित विभागाध्यक्ष सम्मानित संकाय सदस्य सम्मानित वित्त नियंत्रक सम्मानित सहायक कुल सचिव और हमारे विश्वविद्यालय के समस्त अधिकारी कर्मचारी विद्यार्थी शोधार्थियों का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं धन्यवाद व्यक्त करता हूं साथ ही मैं धन्यवाद कर, व्यक्त करता हूँ जो हमारे साथ में गूगल मीट फेसबुक लाइव और यूट्यूब पर हमारे साथ में जो पार्टिसिपेंट्स जुड़े हैं उनका मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आभार व्यक्त करता हूं मैं हमारी टेक्निकल सपोर्ट टीम जिसमें डॉक्टर रश्मि जैन डॉक्टर मनोज गुप्ता डॉक्टर भरत भाटी मिस्टर शंकर गोहिल मिस्टर पीपी पी गुप्ता है मैं उन सभी का आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ और मैं उन सभी का आभार व्यक्त करता हूँ जो प्रत्यक्ष और अप्रत्यक्ष रूप से इस कार्यक्रम को इस कार्यशाला को जिनकी गरिमा में ऑनलाइन उपस्थिति से हम सुव्यवस्थित रूप से सफल कर सके संचालित कर सके मैं पुणे हमारी माननीय संरक्षक माननीय कुलपति महोदया सम्मानित संकाय अध्यक्ष सम्मानित निदेशक सम्मानित हमारे रिसोर्स पर्सन सभी का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं, धन्यवाद व्यक्त करता हूं और यह विश्वास व्यक्त करता हूँ कि यह जो आज का जो सेशन था ये वास्तव में बहुत ही फ्रूटफुल सेशन रहा है और हमें वास्तव में बहुत अच्छी जो हमारी रिकमेंडेशंस हमें प्राप्त हुई हैं डेफिनेटली सर हम आपको एश्योर करते हैं कि आपकी इस जो आपने एड्रेस किया है जो आपकी ये जो आ, जो रिकमेंडेशंस हैं हम इस पर कार्य करेंगे मैं चेयरपर्सन एड्रेस के लिए मैं हमारे डायरेक्टर महोदय को धन्यवाद करता हूँ मैं इस कार्यशाला में सभी का धन्यवाद आभार व्यक्त करता हूं और इस कार्य कार्यशाला के समापन की घोषणा करता हूं आप सभी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू डॉक्टर थैंक यू प्रोफेसर विजय खरे सर एंड थैंक यू प्रोफेसर जी पालन राय सर आपका मार्गदर्शन हमें बना रहे 
आपकी बहुत बहुत गर्मा में उपस्थिति से ये बहुत अच्छा प्रोग्राम हो पाया है सर आई एम वेरी थैंकफुल टू बोथ ऑफ यू सर थैंक यू सर यहाँ से कहा से करना है वो